Welcome back, modelers. So today we have our next installment of the three little Focke Wolfs. So today we're going to be going through and we're going to do a little bit of the modeling on the sides. So we're going to start out with this scheme. We're going to do some RLM 74, as you can see here. So we'll be painting that and then we're going to progress and I'm going to do it in reverse. We'll do 74 even though should be doing the light and then the dark, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a taboo thing. I'm gonna do it the reverse because it's already in my cup. And so we're going to do it that way, then have a hard line as you can see, when we're gonna go back and do the 75 for those portions. So we'll be working on that. And of course, all the modeling to the sides. And we're gonna switch colors eventually and get over to the different, uh, 83 that this is going to use for that particular one um, and it looks like a lot of wispiness going on so the key with this especially in the 72nd scale the divine scale is getting your airflow and getting the paint mixture proper um, working with a little bit of a new setup and this is running into some challenges so i'm actually working on redoing this a little bit so i've got a piece of paper make sure i've got everything close to what we should have and the other thing that i've done is i've got flow improver i don't know if that's there but there you go so i've added airbrush flow improver to get this vallejo to work a little bit better let's run into some tip issues so let's try this second take see if this will work a lot better all right so with this kind of harder edge on the top and then it just kind of diffuses into some wispiness so that should be fun just a little bit i'm also getting used to the the holy roller trigger that they've got on this it's so you can see it's a little bit higher and so that adds some challenges okay so once you get to the skill on it it's great but just finding that sweet spot where the paint flows just pulling back a little tricky so once I find where it's getting a good amount of paint mixture just move it around and get this effect but it looks like probably clean that up a little okay at the top we need a little bit more just like that just kind of diffused it should be happening on these sides but not quite splatter some of this we can come back and fix a little bit with uh putting some what 75 on the sides to kind of fix that up a little bit so this is a little closer, you can kind of see my goofs. Um, this type of technique is, on a 72 is not for the faint of heart. Just, just got to get just the right mixture. This is probably where I'm going to get people in the chat saying, well, the problem is you're using Vallejo. And it is definitely more challenging with this Vallejo, but not impossible. All right, a little bit of an update here. So I've been trying a couple times now, um, 
just trying to do the modeling on the 172nd and it just wasn't working. I don't know if it's paint or uh, getting accustomed to a new air compressor or uh, some people will just be like, well, it's just because you were using Vallejo. Um, not really working out too well. So I was able to clean up and get uh, bird C here. Oh, it needs to be fixed a little bit. Um, to a point, I like the diffusion and everything. But this took a couple passes to it. So it wouldn't be really fair to show you all the different attempts of my screw uppery so i stand before you a broken man um one thing that i've done so now this is on the third take i've painted over there you can see a little bit of remnants on it which uh i might clean up a little bit more before we go in so rather than freehand the modeling i'm actually going to change this up completely i'm going to cheat so what i've got is i've taped up one of my stencils. So it just has a couple of different openings. And then I've got a little bit of fun tack on the back of it to just try to go in and uh, give it a little bit of depth because I don't want a, a hard edge when attempting to do this pattern. So that is the game plan. I'm going to use that for the modeling rather than freehand and try to figure out What's going on with my airbrush? If it's something with the equipment, probably me. I mean, I've airbrushed for over a decade, but still, uh, there's a lot of mystery to me. So we're going to add a little bit more 76 to clean up some of the spots on this. And then I'm going to try it with the model and the template and just try to do it that way and see if it comes out a lot better. So stay tuned for that. Okay. So let's give it a go. See I Whoa, sorry for the earthquake there. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna hold it at a distance here. And voila, yay. Okay. So I gotta be careful not to do any overspray. All right. That one looks a little funky, but do a little of this. That's the cool thing about German camo is doesn't necessarily have to look a certain, certain way. I mean, I can touch that up freehand. Yeah, whatever. That one. Might need a little bit of touching up. There, okay. Let's try this ear-shaped one. Now we're cooking. Not a market improvement compared to what I just had, but definitely better. Okay, so I think I like the small one there. that a couple places and I want it too far away So a little bit of touching up I'm going to need to do in a sub couple of these. Um, I might try 
couple different. Here I could just do this. And get some different patterns. Does it match my picture? Not quite. But I think we're actually making some progress. I would prefer the freehand, but... It is what it is. Okay, so do some different touch-up works on some of these. Okay, the good thing about this screw up, um, there's gonna be a blue band there, so it doesn't matter. That was more of a test area. So I don't have to worry about right in long in here. That's not gonna matter. Okay, so I'll just make a bunch more of those type of dots and wrap up that side. All right, so <clears throat> a little bit of an edit to here. Rather than uh, waste a bunch of your guys' time showing me the multiple failures that I had, so with this, um, I think I tried something and then it didn't work over and over and over. So I think on like the fourth attempt, I just completely emptied out all the paint because I wasn't getting the right mix and started from scratch. Tried to do a little bit different consistency, tried to mess with the flow improver a little more. And I think I got to a result that I'm uh, accepting of, I guess. So uh, this is the final result for the second Focke Wolf we're working on today. And for 172 scale, I'm going to just accept that because uh, there's a lot of decals that are actually gonna be covering up uh, quite a bit of these anyway. So um, I'm gonna move on, but to show you a little bit of a reference, this is what it shows in the manual of what it should be looking like. And this is where we are at. So as you can see, um, all of the different models um, on the picture are smaller than what I've got. But it was really hard. I even tried going into like doing some stuff with these spatters, with putting a little bit to get a little bit of diffusion and stuff but I, it just wasn't really doing what I want. So this is different from what they have on there, but at least it's something that I think looks appealing to a level. So I might just keep it just like that. I might do it over again. Uh, I might use the technique with the template again. I don't know, but it's at least something that doesn't look like I've got just either flurm flowing everywhere or just spiders just going everywhere. So we're going to move on from there and we're gonna go on to our third. So number, well, letter C. So we're gonna be working on doing the 75. Do that first. And then after we finish up with the 75 in that area, then we're gonna have a lot of fun with the 83. And then there's a little bit of just randomness that we'll also add into there of the uh, 81. So that is where we're at. All right, so what I've done for getting into the mix, just have a 75 and then put in a couple drops of airbrush flow improver. And so we'll see how this works. Looks like I got some leakage. Okay, that looks like it's gonna flow pretty well. So, look at our reference. Okay, so the front cowling aft of the canopy and then some squiggles. So, 
we'll work on the top first and then we're going to go with the sides. And as long as I can keep it to one layer, unlike the other Faka that we're not going to talk about here, then we can try to keep a little bit of our pre-shading in place. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this flows all the way down to about here. I like to do it just if I'm freehanding, I'm gonna try to understand where all the lines do the outline and then fill it in. So about here. Yeah, I think I just was running into a bad mix because this is going to be flowing a little better. forward section and then aft or I guess here to there's gonna be the red and black so it's not a crazy big section just that little bit there and then it comes down a little so, not a whole lot to this little bit. Okay, and then it's hard to tell. I'm going to use some artistic license here and try to look from the picture. It seems like there's just some subdued in the back of this. I don't know why the other paint wasn't playing ball like this. And then a little bit of random patchiness. There. And then... Okay. So I think that's our first start. Do the same thing on the other side. Just wispy, wispy randomness. Well, this is gonna be colored over with the darker anyway, so not a big deal. So we're gonna a little bit of tip dry. Okay, that's that part. So now I'll switch over to the 83. Okay, so don't imagine I need more than like three drops. So I'm gonna try to do the same ratio here and do just like two drops of the flow improver. So worked on the last one, so. There we go. Okay, so this one, it's gonna be pretty fun, right? We're just gonna do a lot of randomness, splottiness, um, just about everywhere forward of where we're gonna put that line, so. Start out with the top.
flip around. Okay, so I need a little bit of a edge against that. Good coverage. All right. So now, just the wispiness coming all the way down. Just a little bit of paint far away, making it subdued. Yeah, it's turned out pretty good. Make some parts a little bit thicker. Okay, and then we go all the way back. Okay, that's coming out pretty good. We're on here. Just moving around chaotically. up the pressure a little. And just make a little bit of modeling spots. Now that I think is going to be a keeper right there. Okay, so I need to see Nothing on the tail. So that's that. So just have to do a little bit of wisps of the 81. And then I'm going to consider this one done. All right. So I'm going to call this a wrap. So let's take a look. We've done. So I think this was probably my favorite scheme to at least paint. And I think it uh, turned out very close to what we uh, are looking at with the uh, scheme. So that looks pretty good. Next up, the one that uh, gave me the most heartburn. And we'll see uh, how this looks with all the decals. I decided to go back over it a little bit and try to tighten up some of these with some RLM 76 on top of it. And so I think that turned out decent is, I think, the level that I would put. I don't know. Um, acceptable. And I think a lot of these modeling patterns are going to be kind of cut up anyway when we get into um, all the decals. So got a little bit more work I've got to do on all of these with uh, some masks, but wanted to go more over just the modeling technique. So this one I really liked, and I think it'll look really good with all the decals on top of it and the black cowling. So I think that turned out quite well compared to what we have in the reference. And so we've got that there. Now, what did I learn from all this? Uh, quite a bit, because what I was expecting to get this accomplished with uh, using the proverbial model air is I'm going to have to use quite a bit of thinner. And so that was my first assumption, and that's where I got it wrong. Um, started running into a lot of problems with it, with that. But as soon as I changed over and just did the model air with just a couple drops of flow improver, it was working quite well. Um, wasn't getting into a 
really finicky air pressure that I had to get into and everything else just runs quite a bit smoother. So uh, I think that's what I'm going to take from it from here and use uh, if I'm going to be using that for the future. Um, as far as other paints, so I've been using these here on the other Focke Wolf, the more detailed Focke Wolf, and I think it's worked a little bit better. So I've been pretty impressed with these. So this one is just about ready to go to decals. I need to clean up just a little teeny bit with uh, some of the marking on this um, and get that yellow band a little bit better. And, uh, but then this one is gonna go to the next stage. So we'll be working on that a little later. Okay, but beyond that, if you have anything that you noticed that I could improve with, like the using Vallejo, if uh, there's something you found that just is a game changer, kind of like uh, leveling thinner and using the uh, AK paint to something like that, by all means, put it in the comments so we can learn together. And uh, next step with the video, we're going to look at filters. So filtering all these paints and go from there. So I'll see you next time.